Good day, folks. Hello, Tyler. Good morning. Welcome, fellow co-chair. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. I am going to paste the meeting notes. There. Let's see what we have. Um, July 11th, and it was about a month ago for the last one with holidays and other things going on. Folks could drop your names into the meeting notes and any agenda items you have. Give it a couple of minutes and for anyone else to join. Hey, Tom. Hey, Oliver. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I guess I can share my screen actually. Um, so co-chair results, we uh, were able to complete the elections finally. Um, thanks for putting yourselves forward and going through the process and uh, final results. So for the service provider, representative Tom Koblen from Vodafone. Hey, Tom, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, CNF developer. So this is representing vendors and network equipment providers and anyone creating CNFs. Victor Morales from Samsung. And then the CNCF Kubernetes Community Co-Chair, um, uh, Taylor Carpenter, that's me. So our term uh, would have started earlier in the year, but because the elections were this far out, we've adjusted the terms to 1st of July through June 30th, 2023. So it's a one year term. 
next year we'll try to get it going early enough so that we can end at those times. All right, so a few events. Uh, folks are probably aware of most of these. So it's our summit, KubeCon NA in October. Um, I'm currently planning on going to that myself. We'll see how things are going as far as COVID spikes and all of that for in-person events. But if it's looking good, then I plan on being there. Anyone else on the call plan on being at KubeCon North America in person? Probably I, go, I will go, but I'm, I'm not sure. All right. And likewise, potentially, not sure yet. Yeah. I am unlikely to be there in person, unfortunately. It's difficult to plan these sort of things right now. All right. Well, we do have um, the co-located cloud native uh, telco day event. Have that planned. So CFPs are open. Need to try to get folks to submit on that. Hopefully, have another successful event. Um, we'll provide both remote and in person. Another thing that needs to happen is sponsorship. So, if anyone, if your company's interested or whatever, you want to help, we need to get get that going. And the ONES, there's, uh, I guess it's still open right now through the 29th for submissions. And there are some panels. I don't know who all has um, been looking at the different things there. But there's a, a panel that we may be talking on for regarding the CNCF telco initiatives, including the working group, I'd say, but primarily around the CNF certification and Anikit. I know that's one of them. I don't know if there's any other interesting panels or talks that are planned that would be something of note that we want to write down here. Oliver, you may have a better insight. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> you're referring to the, are you referring to the a specific, the specific uh, conformance, CNF conformance? Well, that, that panel would be one of them, but is there anything else like that we should, I mean, I, I know we could maybe post a link to the, the whole list, but. Yeah, sure. Let me do that. Yeah. If there's anything specific that we want to call out, that one was one that I was thinking of, but anything else? Yeah, I've actually myself taking some, you know, I'll be having some conversations this week and, you know, internally here at my company just to figure out whether or not we're attending. So um, I haven't been on top of this too much either until just recently. There's some things that caught my attention, but um, let me find the link and I'll share that on the chat here. All right, sounds good. And drop it in the meeting notes as well. All right, so uh, does anyone have anything else? I don't see anything written out on the agenda. Well, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't mind adding something to the agenda, ta Taylor, um, or maybe I'd just bring it up for discussion here. Um, I, with with the new newly elected um, chair and co-chairs, I'm wondering if, you know, and again, I don't want to preempt anything you guys are already planning. So, I mean, one of the things that would be interesting is just kind of, you know, a year has ended in terms of, you know, the chair and co-chairs, what, what is our thinking going forward and changes that we want to propose in ways of working, uh, goals, et cetera. So I'm just curious, that may not be something we do today, but maybe just curious to hear from you and Victor and, and, and Tom. Um, if we're you know proceeding as 
how we have been doing things or if we have any suggestions for how we might uh, change our way of working. Good question. Um, from my point of view, I think the CNS certification program's got to be the main focus. Um, that seems to be the flagship thing for this working group. Um, but I, I agree with, uh, I can't remember who it was that said it on the, on the mailing list about making sure that we retain and strengthen the relationships with things like Anacet. Um, yeah, I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Yeah, I appreciate that, Tom. Um, I I would also I, I agree. I, I think you know certainly seeing the uh, CNCF CNF conformance uh, uh, program is is certainly focused. I, I have some you know questions, I guess, still on ways of working around. You know, in the past we have submitted. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of opened up to user stories and and use cases. Um, and I, I, I'm guilty as charged, but I, you know, I have submitted use cases and use stories and really not figured out how to take it from there to the next step, which is really, you know, a discussion around best practices. And I, I mean, I obviously know I could go away and I could write some best practices and air them with this group, but I don't know if there's a better way to do it where you're more engaged. Um, you know, several people are engaged in developing those together rather than just kind of coming and presenting it and hoping someone likes it and gives us a thumbs thumbs up. So again, I don't expect anyone to answer those today. It just gives you know, some food for thought maybe. Yeah, you, you mentioned a good valid point. I guess one of the things that we explored all this last year was the using of uh, discussions, I guess. Using that GitHub feature, at least we get more feedback compared with uh, the feedback that we received in the submitting use cases and best practices. So I don't know if following or like encouraging to use more, something more informal or something more light in, in that way could be, could increase the, the collaboration or something like, I, I don't know, like, but definitely we have to do to encourage others to, to participate and, and make easier the, 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 the collaboration. One of the um, things that's been suggested is around how, um, I guess, the process for getting things through pull requests quicker. And we may have had some of the items where it takes um, you know, more people than are actually working or willing to put in the time right now. And um, if we can make some adjustments on that, it could help too. But personally, I guess like kind of related to that and what I'd like to say is um, pretty straightforward, more, um, more best practices actually published. Robbie had put a skeleton of a document that would list them.
so how do we how do we actually get a lot of the content that we already have written it's not come and write brand new co content but content that's already there like around um, the least privileged principles there's a large amount of content that we actually have in a a document um, tied in with the working group i mean it was directly related so um i don't know if it means something related to getting the content into the format that we already have or if that is maybe there's a problem with the process and and the requirements to actually get it to a point where we're willing to publish something um, on the use cases and user stories we're able to put a lot more of those forward, probably because the requirements on the amount of information about them was lower. And our best practice template is pretty large. Not to say that those things aren't important, but like if we want to move things forward, then we may need to re-examine. Anyways, but I'd, I would like to get the best practice, more best practices actually put out and probably from a, a working group standpoint, and maybe this can be with co-chairs, looking at the CNF certification and what's there and what that relates back to stuff we've already been talking about. We already have content and try to get best practices out of that actually published so people are asking about these things. So I guess what would might help if it's not already been done is um, almost have a, a mission statement for the working group. So we show that the best practices are useful for people who are developing CNFs that will get certified by the certification program or developers who are looking to learn stuff through the exam that some of us have been putting into and trying and trying to put a bit of structure around the content that we're producing and I, I don't mean document structure I mean like why we're we doing it structure um, so it's not just best practices for the sake of it I think that would help. Or is it already exist? Um, what was the last thing? Your voice kind of was a little fuzzy for me. I was just wondering if that, that kind of um, rationale for what we're doing or the mission statement or whatever you want to call it, if that's already does that already exist for the working group? Yeah. Yeah, super clear. Maybe re-examining the mission statement is yeah. something. Um, um, I'm happy to do go out, take a look at that because I need to get back into the detail of all of this. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this is um, we've kind of been going down the, the same general path and it's continued to um, Get a little bit a little bit more specific i'm trying to look oh i'm in governance that's why i'm having a hard time where is is there a mission statement charter here we go okay I guess um, I 
Yeah, I think that that in the scope section is maybe what I'm thinking of rather than the mission state. Yeah. How how are we going to achieve that mission? Um, or rather, the best practices. You know, we, we're doing them. But what? How will they help that? Um, yeah, or something. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll have a look at that. Because I think I think the the link with the CNF certification program and the test suite is quite clear. I think the link with other SIGs and tags, or whatever they're called nowadays, is less clear. Or, or how we could achieve that. Um, I think any of this is good stuff for trying to do what the mission is and tied in what we've talked about and it you know, relates to the CNF certification. The bigger question is what are people going to be willing to help with and how do we motivate for the specific areas? You know? Yeah. What is you know? What's more likely is if people are willing to talk about metrics and white papers, and they don't want to, you know, work on on this sort of thing anymore. Yeah. Okay. We we need to switch and focus. Uh, Taylor, Taylor, at the risk, uh, you know, I don't know, again, just kind of tying back to what I was saying earlier, and I don't know if it's just me. So, again, by all means, if anyone has a you know, different opinion, please let me know. But one thing that I think still is helpful is just to, I think this page is useful, but I think it it's also for those of us who may, you know, not be clear from, you know, how we are achieving our goals, right? Let's say if we just for the second say that achieving our goal would be to be generating or publishing, you know, best practices. It, it's not always clear where the work begins. Where does the work begin? And does it begin with um, a use case, a user story? What happens after that? Um, where does, you know, I guess I, I just sometimes lack the view of how do we go from start to finish? Um, because then that kind of makes it more obvious in terms of how, or you know, what kind of effort any individual will have to make um, in this work. So, for example, all right, use cases that has been you know generated, or use cases, user stories. All right, what's next? Is it because it can feel a, a bit you know uh, lonely, <laughs> for lack of a better term. You know, I write the use cases, I write the use uh, user stories, I write the best practices, I bring them to the group, I ask you to review them. That's one way to do it, and I don't know if that's the optimal path or if there's something else which says once you've done that then you know you should be raising your hand asking for people who want to work together in terms of uh drafting best practices or writing a white paper or whatever it might be so i'm not sure if that's clear but just trying to to uh, elaborate a little bit you know from someone who would like to be helping form formulate some best practices specifically around things like state um or state CNFs or state, you know, then then I would, it's not clear to me how I proceed. Okay, um, good questions, comments. I, I think we actually addressed that in the past. Um, I don't know, but I presume that it's probably a recorded call. But uh, the, so I don't know what was documented around it. So related would be, this contributing document. So what are the different, you know, different things that tie into um, the end goal? As far as actually saying here is step one and here's the last step. Um, I don't know if we have a document. I feel like we may have a document 
or it may be written out in the meeting notes further down or if we have an archive version that actually went through what you're saying like here is the steps um, from i think one of the things in the other other markdown was talking about brainstorming and ideas and what are the um, types of basically building for the context so you want the ideas on that so user stories and use cases are probably a, a good place to go from that that high level like a here's a user story or use case name and you just say in this type of scenario and now you actually need to write it out and then you're probably going to end up with well, do we have all the definitions around those things? And then eventually when you have the use case and user story, well, you can look at, well, what are, what are the different problems um, that we're looking at in that if you break down the individual pieces and what, how can we deal with each of those? That's where the best practices would come from. I'm saying this in order because that's what you were talking about. And we can definitely write it out that way. Um, the reality is no one um, always starts at step one and goes forward. Um, you may already have an idea and you're part way in, so you're going to go i already know some best practices that work in this other use case do they where do they apply rather than coming up with them from scratch let's try to figure out some new ones because we have experience in other areas but writing out the different you know steps all the way through oliver so that people can see here's how it ties together sounds helpful and then wherever someone wants to contribute, they can jump in. So we may already have a bunch of use cases and someone wants to focus on, let's expand the glossary to make sure we're covering some of the terms in there, or maybe takes some from the existing definitions and glossaries that are written up and merge it into a larger one. That's totally fine in my mind. I What I don't want to do is force everybody to work on step one. If they have no passion about it and they have um, contributions that they can add at step five. That said, we need to list those steps so that everybody can jump in at wherever they think they can help. This somewhat, just this page is somewhat um, listing. I mean, if, you know, general improvements could be pushed to the last if you're going to number these. Gap analysis and general improvements come after your, if you're looking at, you, you're going to keep doing that at the end. So you say, here are these practices and they applied to these use cases. We have the definitions about how, you know, what they mean and how to use them. And then as you're moving forward, you're, um, you know, we, we may do a gap analysis before it goes into production, but if you're without thinking about that, um, you, well, I, I guess I, I should say, even if you're going into production, thinking about it before production, you're probably thinking about what would happen in production. So it's a similar thing. You're going to implement something, you're going to put it out there, you're going to examine it and see, you know, did it work or do we need to make changes? And then we're gonna go back, okay. So the use case or user story is still the same. So what are the other practices to meet the gaps? So just out of curiosity, Taylor, so um, is this, we're basically saying then if I'm looking at this contributing.md document, um, <clears throat> when it says what to contribute, you know, you can contribute a best practice. Are you, and, and to your point, you're saying you don't necessarily want to force everyone to start at step one if you're somewhere else. So are you suggesting that if I, if I think I have a best practice, I can just start straight in and saying, here's, here's the best practice I think that I'd like to submit. 
And there's no real, I mean, if I look at that template, you know, you have, or we have, I should say, um, you know, the, the user stories is optional. So I'm not required to provide a work, you know, any context. I can just say, here's, you know, here's a good, what I think is a good working uh, best practice. How, how does that, you know, I guess I'm just trying to understand how does that, how, what, what is the, the criteria for that to be considered as a best practice versus something else that there's more meat or more, you know, context provided for it. Do you understand what I mean? In other words, I'm just curious. I, I mean, I may have a good idea, but it may not have a lot of underlying support. Sure. So I'll try to answer those uh, several questions. Um, someone could go right to saying, I have a best practice. So the, I try to think of another one than the one that we published. The non root is what came to my mind, but um, not using privilege mode for your containers. You know, so they go, this is a best practice. Where is that coming from? It's not out of the air. We're not talking about people just making up stuff. That's fine if someone wants to make up something nobody's heard of. They'll still need to communicate why they think it's a best practice. So that goes into what is the acceptance criteria? So the template and I believe the process version have stuff listed here, like what is required. We can come and adjust this, you know, talk about it as a group and everything and say if we think differently. Um, so approver, so that what is this? Implementable. Implementable. So if someone comes up with some idea, but maybe Kubernetes doesn't even have some feature or functionality currently that works with it, it's fine, but I wouldn't call it a best practice if it's not implementable on Kubernetes. You could say it's a best practice on another platform. That's totally fine. But trying to say it's a best practice that can be implemented on Kubernetes is a totally different thing. And that's what we're trying to do in the group. Like, what can you do right now? If you need to use external tools and have a second platform, that should not be, that's out of scope. Let's just say that's out of scope. So that's why this one is there. And so it's required. Uh, the motivation, did, did you provide a summary and motivation? I should probably pull up one of the existing ones. Um, let's just do this, no root. So summary and motivation. So what do you act, what summary is? What is this actual best practice? Tell me what you're, what the best practice is, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's saying you shouldn't run as this privileged user. Probably if we're talking Unix based kernel, then UID zero. So that's, that's what we're talking about. The user itself, not container privileges, nothing else. This is specifically about the kernel user. So that's pretty straightforward, the summary. So someone can look at this best practice Oliver and, and know what am I, what is this actually about? They, uh, you know, ideally the name tells you containers should not execute process as a non-root or should execute. The summary is expanding on that a little bit. And now we have the motivation. This is a, you know, a, a quick way of looking at what is it and why are we saying this is a best practice? That's a motivation. So both of those, those are required. You're, if you don't have a summary and you don't have your motivation, then the best practice is not gonna be accepted. And then from there, you, you know, we start providing more details. Um, beyond that, like it talks about a testing plan. So this is not that, Tests are completed, they might be, but is it testable? So some best, some implementations are harder to test than others. I don't think anything you would call it impossible, but 
if, if we can't communicate, here is how you test the best practice, then we can't verify the best practice. So at least some type of communication around, here are the different things in it. This isn't the test case and spec and everything else right now, but there needs to be something. And this is probably input when you're talking with different folks to whoever can help with that. So from the, I'll just bring up Annika, the RC team. So if, if, if there's something there and people are like, yeah, we don't know how to test that, then that's gonna be a problem to at least highlight. Um, scoring, this one's probably something that we should remove. Um, and let, or we need to modify. This could tie into if it's specifically for the CNS certification, how that would tie in would be. In my mind right now, this is talking off, you know, just on the fly. Is it an essential type of best, uh, best practice? Would we say everyone should absolutely do this? So non running processes, non root. I think is a, a pretty essential, but you have, may have others that we go, no, absolutely. Everyone should do this. There's no questions. Now, it doesn't mean that there's no exceptions, but we're saying this is very strongly rep recommended best practice, you know, and decide on, on where it, it lies on that. Um, implementation history, not required, but, you know, this is going to be good as we continue. So we go, is this part of, do we have tests out there now? Is it part of the certification process? Yeah. Whatever other things that we want to put. And then the supporting documentation. So um, I don't think we actually highlight, actually, let me see up here. User stories say optional. No, it's optional. References are not optional. Um, that might be part of what you're talking about here. It, I think the, user stories or use cases, this is how it's relevant. I guess this would in some ways tie into the motivation. What are we trying to solve with this best practices? So the use cases and user stories are highly recommended. Right now we don't have them marked required. Um, maybe because, I, you know, I don't know for sure, but maybe because there may be something that's obviously a agreed on best practice and there's a lot of references like this one even if you didn't have our own um, user stories for this no root and containers best practices the reference links would cover more than what we have in that context to provide, um, you know, where, where do you apply this? If it makes, if it's needed though, um, we can go through and adjust, you know, what do we think are required and optional and what we may add or modify for this particular set. But I would say this is the end goal, Oliver, um, for a lot of the content. Maybe it's the end goal is to have a, a list of best practices that people can reference with, you know, all the content within each best practice that helps them understand why, you know, why each one of us important. Is it relevant to them? And, and enough information that they can go off and, you know, figure out how to implement it for themselves. We're not implementing it for everybody, but if they can understand enough and there's enough references, then they can say, yep, this is relevant to me. I'm going to um, 
try to do this. If we take, I guess if, you know, if, if everyone agrees that that's a good goal, like a list, a list of best practices that people developing CNS or validating that CNS are following a set of best practices. If, if the goal is we're going to have this list and it's going to have relevant information, then how do we make that process? easier to follow so that we can publish more and um, you know what is actually required and not required and relevant I think would go into that Oliver Yeah, I, I appreciate that, uh, Taylor. Um, <clears throat> and I guess it was implied, but I think to your, I mean, for me, the end goal has been fairly clear, uh, uh, wanting the best practices and a list of those. So that, that's not been so much of a question for me. Um, but to your point, maybe also part of that end goal is this published best practices or, you know, you're talking about CNF vendors, use, you know, being able to look upon them and say whether or not this is, you know, valid or not valid or something they're going to use or implement. Um, and I guess it's also, this is also feeding into other work streams like the CNF test suite. So, and the conform and thus the conformance program as well. So it's, you know, there's a chain of things that are taking place. One very quick question, Victor or uh, Taylor. Uh, when you were showing the um, contribution page there, uh, there was a point about uh, implementable, and it looks like there's a label or something. I, I you can't click on it. Where do, where do we get a definition of that? What that means? Yeah, that point there. The checkoff list. Okay. So um if you're not highlighting it if you just look i mean implementable it looks like you know it's referred to you know it if you click somewhere else you'll see that it's obviously you know as if it were defined somewhere or else or i don't think there's any definition inside of the cnf working group repo okay because it, it, I'm sorry, guys. I mean, you know, <laughs> tell me to be quiet and let the next person talk. But I here's an example for me. I don't know what that, you know, I need to understand what that means. You know, if, if we mean that it needs to be something that you can support from Kubernetes, you know, then OK. Uh, or does it mean something else? Uh, I think that would have a bearing on on the on the best practice. Sure. Um, I think we should expand on it. You know, the simplest would be implementable within Kubernetes. But, but then I would ask what that means. <laughs> so, but I think we need to define it and maybe that's, you know, we don't have to do that right now, but I think we, it would be useful to understand what does that specifically mean? Add a, add a um, message, you know, you can link to this. Or... I, I'm I'm only operating with one arm, Taylor. I've had surgery, so I can't. I, I'm going to ask if someone can maybe just help out. Or all right, let me put it in like this then. All right.
Yeah, sounds good. So we can go, th you know, what maybe one of the things that we can do is go through these documents and see. Um, yeah, good idea. Create an issue. Um, that when you get a chance, Oliver, can you please create an issue for that? It's in the document now. For any of the ones where you're, you're thinking, I don't know what this is, or can we adjust or add? And then um, we can go through and look at any of these and decide what adjustments, what we want to add and everything else. I know some of this was left more general so that as things change, we can, it would be relevant <clears throat> to that. Um, that said, I think we can make some of it a little more specific. And if in the future we need to expand it, we can come back and do that. We're not setting something in stone. All right, any other questions, comments? No, I guess that Oliver made a lot of uh, good points. I mean, it's, it's important to um, just uh, think about it and, and maybe modify a few things if we need to change uh, in order to, um, I don't know, like provide more use cases or um, best practices in this case. So maybe we should uh, plan in, in the next session to think about more, how can we, um, if we need to modify something, I'm, I'm not talking about modifying the mission, but probably the way to achieve that mission, maybe uh, by brainstorming and suggesting new ideas or something like that. I like the idea of the issues being created for things that are needed. If, if we need to look at the overall process and uh, maybe write that out, could be. <clears throat> we have a lot of it, so um, already written. So when I'm saying this, I'm, it's okay to say we already have it and pulled the content. The idea would be to, I think, um, which goes along with what you're saying, Victor, we could get together and go through the write out the process or find the documentation for the process that we have to get a best practice published and and then after that's written out it can be examined and we decide if there needs to be any changes mm -hmm. but first list everything i mean i i just kind of jumped around based on what i could remember and what oliver you were asking but if we actually have the full thing written out, then that'd be good. Um, another thing that we could do is, you know, look at the more at the template, which is, you know, that's part of the process. But I'd I'd just say writing out the entire process from start to finish might be a good place. And the, the other thing that I was thinking, I mean, uh, we. We noticed that during the talk today that we have a lot of participation. I mean, at least many people submitted good ideas. So, and probably we don't have to wait until the next uh, talk today. Mm -hmm. So probably we can provide this and as, a, as a space for others to share ideas. And, and I mean, not necessarily to, to, to have to write it down uh, use cases or um, best practices, but at least sharing what they have done in their own companies or their own uh, projects to, to provide CNF and, and just train ideas like uh, to specific topics uh, or specific uh, problems that they face. Just use this as an space and, and just explain or <laughs> put some, or, or just sharing chain ideas, I guess. And that way we can 
use it and, and not wait until the next, you know, uh, talk today and for for having the opportunity to share all these things because also we have that limited uh, time in that particular day, so probably we can use this as an an opportunity for for all them. That sounds like a good idea. All right, y'all. Um, if there's nothing else, we'll stop here and maybe come back next time. Do we want to start with documenting the process to have a best practice published, like from start to finish, and then we after that we can decide if we have time to start examining any gaps or stuff like definitions that are not there. Does that sound good for a, a focus of the next call? Yes. Yeah, I think that would be good. Um, I'm going to put something here so we remember it. What does it mean to publish? Um, I would say that we have some best practices as pull requests, but we don't have them in a list. We don't have them where we're saying, here is the, the ones that we're saying are essential and, you know, very important. So that would be another one oliver like what is the different levels of contribution of a best practice before it's production ga ready or whatever <laughs> so we can communicate i think all of that can be part of this so the process from where it goes from an idea all the way until it's probably you know we would communicate to the world that it's recommended that everyone does it. So we'll do that. We'll start on that, writing out that process and then fill in the gaps after. But first, let's get it documented. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.